On planet Earth, physics plays an important role in all of our lives. Whether we like it or not, physics is all around us. Energy. Projectile motion. Momentum. Friction. And the last one we'll be studying, centripetal acceleration. This is where we're going to stop the intro part of our video and actually talk about the physics behind all of these mechanisms. The first thing we're going to talk about today is momentum, and we're going to talk about that with pool balls. Momentum can be defined as mass in motion, and you can get the momentum by multiplying the mass times the velocity. You can see momentum in pool because balls collide all the time, and there's a change in momentum. All collisions in pool are actually elastic collisions. Elastic collisions basically are when two balls collide and actually the total kinetic energy of the system remains the same. There are three cases of elastic collisions and we're going to show them all here today. The first case is when two objects of the exact same mass collide. In this case there are two balls of the same exact mass. What do we think is going to happen when the cue ball strikes the three? Let's find out. Basically, what happened here is the cue ball transferred all of its momentum to the three ball, causing it to stop and causing the three ball to actually move forward and land inside the hole. This is our first rule. When two objects with the same mass collide and one's stationary and one's moving, the one that's moving is going to convert all of its momentum to the other. Our second case is going to be when a small object collides with a much bigger object. For instance, in this case, the cue ball and the basketball. What do we think is going to happen to both? This is case two. When an object of lesser mass hits a bigger object, it's going to bounce backwards, while the other object of bigger mass is actually going to move forward, but not that much. What's going to be your last case? Hmm, you probably guessed it. It's going to be... Ready, a set. bigger object that's moving with a smaller object that's stationary. What do you think is going to happen here when this big pool ball hits a smaller ping pong ball? Okay. This brings us to our third rule. If the impacting object has more mass, it's going to slow down. It's going to slow down a little bit but move forward, and the stationary object that was originally not moving is going to move forward as well. Our second concept of the day is going to be friction. Through this we're going to show you the relationship between the coefficient of friction the normal force, and the work needed to stop me. Basically, the coefficient of friction is equal to the force of friction over N, which is the normal force. The coefficient of friction is definitely known to be lower for the socks, the fluffy socks, and, st and higher in the backpacking shoes. So basically, guess which one's going to take longer to stop on this table I try to slide on. Clearly, you can tell that the backpacking shoes are not sliding as well as my slippery socks. In order to understand why this happens, we're going to have to go back to the original equation, which is the coefficient of friction is equal to the force of friction over the normal force. This equation can later be, be turned into the force of friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. With this, we can tell that the force of friction is going to be smaller with the socks because the coefficient of friction is so low. In comparison, the hiking shoes have a high coefficient of friction and so the force of friction is going to be much higher and at the end of the day, the higher force of friction 
is going to stop the shoes much faster than they would the socks. Our third physics concept is going to be centripetal acceleration. So, there are two parts of centripetal forces in driving. The first is when your car is turning. As you can see, my car just took a few turns in the last video. Obviously, if there wasn't a centripetal force bringing it inwards, it would have definitely just went on a tangent or went to the right, and at the end of the day, my car would have crashed. In this case, the main force that is actually keeping the car on the road is friction, because basically the car actually wants to drift off to the right, but because of the friction there between the tire and the road, it actually moves inwards. Another centripetal force in driving is the force that keeps us from exiting the car. And we're going to talk about that more after we watch what I'm talking about. Here, as you can see, the eye was moving left or right depending on which way we were turning. And basically, when I was turning, one thing that was keeping me in place was the seatbelt. But in another case, I was actually leaning to my right and leaning against the door. In that case, as you can see, the normal force that the door is pushing on me to keep me inside of the car is actually the centripetal forces because it is shooting me into the middle of the circle. Our fourth physics concept of the day is going to be energy. According to the first law of thermodynamics, energy is never created nor destroyed. So, what you're going to be seeing in the next few minutes is me using my kinetic energy to increase my potential energy. And I have to use my kinetic energy to increase the potential energy because I'm not going to be able to create or find any other energy. So this is an example of me pulling myself up, and that's me using kinetic energy. When I add three more pounds, however, the amount of potential energy increases when I go up, and thus I have to use more kinetic energy to bring myself up, and so it's more tiring, but it's possible. Here is me putting 30 pounds into my backpack, which is going to increase the potential energy greatly when I'm higher up, and so in order to get there, I'm going to have to use a lot of my kinetic energy, to the point where I don't even have enough. Our last concept of the day is going to be projectile motion. In the big game of ping pong, sometimes you decide who gets to serve first by putting both paddles on the opposite sides, and both players stand on the opposite sides, and they try to throw the ping pong ball onto the paddle. The person that gets it on first will get to serve first. There are two parts to projectile motions. There's VX which is basically the measure of the velocity going horizontally, and there's VY, which is the measure of the velocity going vertically. So our first throw is going to have a really high theta, which goes up, and so the VY is going to be really high, while the VX is going to be really low. So let's see how that goes. So right there, because the VY was high, as well as the theta that it was thrown at was really high, the T, which is the time it was in the air, was really long. However, it didn't get much distance because the VX was really small, so it didn't reach the top. So, our next row is going to test the opposite. A really large VX, small VY, and a small theta. So let's see what happens with this one. Now, this one, as you can see, had a really low VY, and so because of this, it had a very low time in the air, which ultimately decreased its distance. <clears throat> as a result, while it traveled really fast, it was not able to make the paddle. 
This brings me to my last point, which is that when a th something is thrown at 45 degrees, it has the maximized range. When thrown at 10 degrees, it's going to be way too much VX and way too little VIY. When it's thrown at 80 degrees, it's going to be way too much VY and not enough VX. And both of them will ultimately result in small ranges. So, watch me use this trip, trying to stay at a 45 degree angle as best as I can, and see how I do. Booyah! That's what I'm talking about. And so, as you can see, 45 degree angle is the best, not only for having the most range, but also if you want your first serve in ping pong. And this is where our video ends. Honestly, physics is a part of our entire lives, and I can only pick big five concepts to do today but there are so many concepts out there that I would not have enough time to do all of them even if I tried but at the end of the day I hope you learned something and thank you so much for watching this video I hope you enjoy